What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the College Underdogs Podcast. I'm your host, Trey Smith. And yes, I'm finally back on video. Sorry for this week being so thrown off. Feeling better. I'm back to normal, 100%. Let's go. So today, I'm going to look at uh, the upcoming slate of matchups in American Athletic Conference action. And then we're going to look more into this bowl eligibility conversation that I started on yesterday's show. Um and and kind of look at a best case scenario for the AAC as the season comes to a close. And um, of course, I talked about it on yesterday's show last night, FAU got the win. Um, SMU also got another win. So uh, right now, American, for the first week for AAC basketball, uh, so far, if, I, if I'm accurate, only one loss. And I don't want to keep dragging it out, but it's that one loss on a questionable call in overtime. Um, But yeah, so we're going to look at some picks. We're going to look at the schedule, make some picks, I should say. Um, Then the bowl eligibility, best case scenario. And yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what we come up with. I'd love to also get your thoughts in the comments. But uh, before we get into it, if you're watching on YouTube, Video is back. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment at the end, share it with a friend. And if you're listening on one of the streaming platforms, um, please leave a five-star rating and a positive review. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Okay. So looking at this weekend's schedule, uh, UNT at SMU. SMU is favored 17 points. This is a Friday night matchup. It'll be on primetime TV. I don't know how well attended this game is going to be normally i would think unt at smu would would bring a pretty pretty good crowd uh even just from the unt side looking forward to that matchup but it's a friday night game this is the opening week of high school playoff football in the state of texas and ain't nothing like friday night lights in texas especially when the playoffs start so i would imagine that's where most people are going to be Maybe if this game had a little bit more stakes for both teams, not just um, SMU, who, look, I think SMU wins the game. I do think they're going to get UNT's best, absolute best shot. Um, So that's why I'm actually going to take UNT plus 17, though I do think SMU takes care of business. And what will likely be a not so well attended game due to the high school football playoffs. Uh, Next on the list, Tulane versus Tulsa. Tulane is minus 23. Here's the thing. My knee jerk was to pick Tulsa and the points based on how Tulane has been playing these past few weeks, really all of conference play. Um, I guess technically not all of conference play because their first, they opened conference play with Memphis. That was a good game. And they, I don't remember who was favored. In fact, Memphis may have been favored, but if Tulane was favored, they um, likely covered that one. But since then, since Memphis, they have not covered in conference play. So that's, I'm a little bit cause for concern on, on, on taking Tulane to cover. So I initially thought, I'm going to take Tulsa in the points, but They're the Lone Ranger in the CFP rankings. They're in full control of their destiny. They had a big time scare a week ago against ECU. I really think they get the wheels back on and not only do they win the game, I think they really take care of business in this game. Tulsa has, I mean, they've kind of been the whipping boy of, of some conference games here are the past couple of weeks. So I'd like to think Tulane comes in, establishes their identity early. Um, and I think they cover. So I'm going to take Tulane minus 23. Then that Temple USF game. So speaking of whipping boys, Temple has definitely been the whipping boy of the AAC until this past week. EJ Warner returns, throws 400 yards, four touchdowns. They're carrying some momentum into this game. USF, this is a big game for them as it pertains to their bowl eligibility. I have this game in Charlotte marked as USF wins for them to get a bowl bid. It's a very significant 
significant game for USF. Temple, obviously, mathematically, is still not out of it. Uh, in fact, they could surpass last year's win total with a win this weekend. So I'm not making a pick on this one. Not because I don't think USF wins. I'm just not sure if USF covers. And I think they're favored. What were they favored? I don't even have it up. It may have been seven. Or maybe more. But I don't know. But I'm not making a pick. I'm staying off of that one. I do think USF still wins. Unless Temple proves me wrong. I mean, unless they found something this past weekend. And they're going to carry that in throughout the final stretch of the season. Uh, obviously, they found their starting quarterback healthy. I mean, that helps. But even when they had him earlier in the season, I mean, he they couldn't protect him. Um, next on the list, UAB at Navy minus two and a half. So this is a big game for UAB. And I'll talk more about why uh, later in this episode. But I like UAB to cover minus two and a half. And I think, I think UABs, if you're a UAB fan watching this, I think there's still hope for the, for the, for the rest of the season. But I think it's very much contingent on uh, getting a win this weekend uh, at Navy. So I'm going to go UAB to cover. They better be ready to stop that triple option, though. And then, of course, it depends on, like, I'm just, what, what's Navy's quarterback situation right now? That's kind of been just the roller coaster this season. ECU at FAU. FAU is favored seven and a half. ECU has been making me look stupid for the past several weeks by covering the spread. They almost beat Tulane. They were neck and neck with UTSA uh, until I think the fourth quarter. I'm going to take ECU in the points, even though I do think FAU wins the game. Unless FAU cracks the code to their defense and, you know, blows the doors off offensively. Uh, I like ECU to cover the spread plus seven and a half. And then finally, Rice at UTSA. So UTSA is favored 14 and a half. And I guess my only caveat here, oh, I forgot to mention, I just remembered, because the same caveat I have for this game is the same one I have for UNT SMU. I also like UNT to cover the spread because last thing I read was quarterback Preston Stone, SMU quarterback Preston Stone was still in concussion protocol, and it's Thursday. Now, maybe I'd have to go double check when that article was written. It may have been yesterday, so maybe there's still some time for him to play Friday, but that's another that was another reason um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep UNT to cover that spread. And then here with Rice, all right, JT Daniels went out in this past weekend as well. Don't know if he's playing. I haven't heard the latest. In fact, maybe I could look it up right now. Because he, he's going to significantly – I can't find anything – so here's how I'm going to pick this one, <laughs> if I'm even allowed to do it. If Daniels plays, I'm taking Rice in the points. If Daniels is out, I'm taking UTSA to cover. Regardless if he plays or not, UTSA wins the game. That's what, that's what my pick is. I mean, I think UTSA wins regardless, but if JT Daniels is playing, I think Rice covers the spread. If he's not, I think UTSA covers. So that's something we need to monitor. Um, and who knows, maybe it's a game time decision. All right, let's, let's talk about this bowl eligibility. So I went and looked this up cause we got into some discussion on yesterday's show in the comments and the American athletic bowl tie-ins, and this is coming from collegefootballnews.com for 2023, 2024. What I'm counting is that they have an affiliation with four bowls. The Fenway Bowl, the Armed Forces Bowl. Well, I guess that's the thing. Is it, is it, is it two or three? Because it's weird how this is, how this is 
worded. So it's got the American Athletic Conference are affiliated with these bowl slots. The Fenway Bowl versus the ACC, the Armed Forces Bowl, and or the Hawaii Bowl. The Armed Forces Bowl being against the Conference USA Hawaii Bowl versus Mountain West. What is that and or? That's that's the part that confuses me. So at first I thought, okay, do they get one or the other? But if it's an and, that means you could potentially get both of them. So is it a maximum of the Fenway Bowl, the Armed Forces Bowl, the Hawaii Bowl, and then the other one is the Military Bowl versus the ACC? So in that case, that would be four plus... <clears throat> the AAC has a chance at putting four teams in the following bowls. And it lists out, it's got the Cure Bowl, Frisco Bowl, New Mexico Bowl, Myrtle Beach Bowl, Boca Raton Bowl, First Responder Bowl, Birmingham Bowl, uh, and the Gasparilla Bowl. They could get four of those slots. So that would be eight total plus a New Year Six slot, which would make nine. Now, just to be safe, if I'm misunderstanding this top part with their affiliations and it's only three because of the and or not four, that would make it seven with plus the New Year's Six Bowl being eight. So as I've been looking at this, as I, again, I opened the door on this on yesterday's show and I did a little bit more research for today as far as what is the best case scenario right now for the American for the American Conference, excuse me, in bowl season. And from what I can piece together, the absolute best case scenario would be seven total teams and one of those being the New Year Six. I'm not saying that mathematically right now it's only seven teams that are currently have the ability to be bowl eligible, but when looking at how the season plays out, kind of being realistic, at least me being realistic of who I think will win in the different matchups that these teams have in the final three weeks of the season, we obviously know who our top four are, right? We've got Tulane, we've got SMU, we've got Memphis, we've got UTSA. Well, I guess I should flip, you know, Tulane, UTSA, SMU, are undefeated, and then you have Memphis right there. Someone did make a good point yesterday that if Memphis were to beat SMU and UTSA were to beat Tulane, that would technically trigger a rematch between UTSA and Tulane in the conference championship. I think I still need to verify this just just to be sure but yeah that what yeah that's what it was as if cuz then you would have multiple one losses and I, I don't know i'd have to go look at the tiebreaker so there's a conversation though but i do remember in the comments yesterday someone did say that if memphis were to beat smu and utsa were to beat tulane it would trigger a rematch between utsa and tulane so I've got to do a little more research into the tiebreaker of everything. Uh, I was going to kind of wait until after that SMU Memphis game to see if it uh, would even be warranted, uh, uh, meaning if, if Memphis does beat SMU. But likely if Memphis, if you're a Memphis fan and you beat SMU and win out, the safest bet is just to have Tulane win out. And I think if Tulane wins out, Memphis gets that spot. But even then, you would have three one losses. And I'd have to see what the tiebreaker is. Hmm. And if you already know, feel free to leave it in the comments. But Because I've been sitting here saying, oh, I think that the winner of the Tulane UTSA game and the winner of the SMU Memphis game will be who play each other in the conference championship. Well, that's obviously true if Tulane wins and SMU wins. Or if... UTSA wins and SMU wins. Obviously, if, if that's how it shakes out, then that would be accurate. You would have the winner of those two games playing each other in the conference championship. But if Memphis wins, that's where I think things get a little tricky. 
especially if Memphis and UTSA win. Because now you would have one, two, three, or, yeah, if Memphis wins, whoever wins Tulane, UTSA, you would have three one-loss teams. And I'd have to look at what the tiebreaker is. But either way, for bowl eligibility's sake, what we want is obviously all four of those teams getting a bowl bid and one of them getting the New Year's Six, right? So that's the best case scenario from that standpoint. Now let's look at the rest of the conference because I said I think we could get seven, best case, seven with the New Year's Six bid. So you've got four there between Tulane, SMU, UTSA, and Memphis with one of those being the New Year's Six bid. Then I still think, as I said yesterday, USF, is is next on the list. I like their matchups, um, even though, like I said earlier with Temple, that they seem to have found something this past weekend. I still like them to win that game, and I like them to win Charlotte, to beat Charlotte. So that would be two more wins that they would need to get the bowl eligibility. Um, I think Rice and FAU, whoever wins the matchup that they have with each other, gets the bowl bid. Um, I think in a best case scenario. Now, uh, I guess another option would be as I'm pulling up the schedule here. Yeah, that wouldn't be a best case scenario for FAU. It'd be best case scenario for FAU, but not for the sake of the conference is this FAU were to beat Tulane. I, I like FAU to beat ECU. And then they're going to have a matchup with Rice. And I like Rice to beat Charlotte. And so I think what we'll have is two five and six teams playing each other in the last game of the season when FAU and Rice play. And I think the winner of that game would be that sixth bowl eligible team. And then the seventh team, man, that as I was looking at it, they have a legitimate chance. And that's UAB. UAB winning that game last week um, against FAU, I mean, if they take care of business against Navy, they're going to finish the season with Temple and UNT. Now, I'm not saying that those are just gimme, just mark them as a W right now, but what I am saying is that those are winnable games for UAB. And I think if North Texas is out of bowl contention by that point and UAB is playing for bowl contention at that point, that could be enough to um, tilt the advantage and in, in, in ultimately the final score of that game. Because what does UNT have to do in order to be bowl eligible? I mean, they have to beat SMU. Yeah, they have to beat SMU. And I don't think they're going to do that. Now, that, that, obviously that narrative changes if they beat SMU. Um, and now that UNT-UAB game could be whoever wins gets the bowl. I don't think that's best for the conference because I think SMU continuing to win out, you know, whether it's a matchup with Tulane in the conference championship, you know, I, I think a, a, a 10 and two SMU versus an 11 and one Tulane is the American conference's best bet at getting the new year's six bid, regardless of who wins. Whereas if Memphis or UTSA are in that championship game and win that championship game, I'm just not so sure if there's some other things, some other dominoes that have to fall in order <clears throat> for the AAC to get the New Year's Six bid. Whereas if you've got a 10-2 and two SMU and an 11-1 and one ranked Tulane team playing in that championship game, I think the winner gets the new year six bid. That's just my opinion though. That's just how I think it'll play out. Uh, but back to UAB, you know, as, as I said, take care of business against Navy this weekend. And then you got temple at home and then you're at UNT. And like I said, if UNT is, is if they're out of it and it's probably not going to be a big crowd for that game. Um, cause there's going to be, again, some high school playoff games happening because that's two days after Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend. You got people that aren't on campus. Um, I mean, I, I, I think UAB makes a bowl game. If I had to give you my hottest take 
to close out this season, it would be that UAB makes, I say makes a bowl game, that UAB gets bowl eligible. They win six. They finish six and six. That would be my hottest take. Boldest take, I should say. Because it's not, still, I'm not going to say it's likely, but it could definitely happen. And I think if they rounded out that seven, so then you could, in theory, the American Conference could have Tulane, SMU, UTSA, Memphis, uh, Rice, or FAU, and UAB. And then, of course, USF. I skipped them, sorry. In that, out of those seven, three of them would be newcomers. Because even with whoever wins Rice or FAU, either one, they're both newcomers. So three of those would be newcomers. And you get the New Year's Six. I consider that a success. I consider that a best case scenario for this first year in the revamped American Athletic Conference. Okay, um, maybe we can revisit that conversation another week. But let me know your thoughts. Who do you got winning this weekend? Who do you got losing? Who covers? Who doesn't cover? And uh, what is the best case scenario for you for the entire conference's sake as it pertains to bowl season? That's it for me. Thank you for watching another episode of the College Underdogs Podcast. Trey Smith signing off.